I've started a court this cruel and lovely, and it is lovely. <laughs> Um, I'm about page 132, so about 25% into it, and it follows a main character, um, I think Prissia is how you pronounce her name. Um, anyway, in her world, basically, when you're born, you're born with certain powers. Well, you are required by law to give up those powers at birth so that the kingdom can use it to defend everybody and um, protect them. And then when you hit a certain age where you're going to launch out into the world and no longer be a part of their community, you go through a ceremony where you are tested once again to make sure that you didn't hold on to powers and lie about it. And then you get your powers back and they wish you well. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, apparently there's some latent powers that can happen that you may not even be aware of and never having used. And if they see that you have that in the, in you, they'll suck that power out of you and kill you on the spot for hiding it. So Prissa is getting really, really close to being of age. And all of a sudden her mom, like hides her away and then throws her basically off a cliff into a river and is telling her on the way, um, um, you've had secret power. It wouldn't give up whenever you were born like it was supposed to. You cannot go through this ceremony. They'll kill you. Run. And so then she meets up with some mercenaries and that's where we're at. And it's interesting. This world is just really interesting. Um, I'm not 100% sure what her powers really are or what's going on, but I am definitely intrigued and I am I'm excited to continue this story. All right, still on sprints? Now halfway. <laughs> um, it's picked up. It, there's a lot going on. I know more about her powers now. There is a sweet kind of slow burn romance happening. Um, Prisca's now, we'll say, employed with something, and there's a plan that it has come about, so we'll see how well it goes. And yeah, she's definitely getting more control over her power and stuff. And we're getting a little more background also on her family and things that she saw when she was growing up, which are kind of sad. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I am really excited and can't wait to see where this goes. Halfway makes me feel like I'm just wanting to have it amp up. I'm wanting more. So let's hope it gives us more. I am now 75% into A Court This Cruel and Lovely, and it's really good. Um, it's feeling three stars still, though, but I'm definitely going to be continuing the series. And for me, I, I'm loving all the revelations we're getting now and the answers we're finally getting, but there's just something about it that's not quite, not quite what I wanted. So there's just a little something missing, a little something more that I want. So I just finished A Court This Cruel and Lovely. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it grabbed me at the end there, and I'm excited to read the next one when I get to it. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I'd say three stars overall. Um, I it was it was okay. It was okay. It got me. I, I like their banter and some of the reveals at the end were were interesting. So I'm excited to see where it goes and yeah, this is uh, an author I'm excited to meet at a Polygon. So I'm about 25% into When the Moon Hatched, and this is my first Sarah Parker, and I am not disappointed so far. So far, it's been kind of almost like a fairy tale, once upon a time kind of vibes is what I'm getting from it, but mixed with now we're in present day, but there's still some lore behind this, and our main character is... Uh, a no-nonsense kind of girl, and I love that. And I love that she's, we'll say, in the company of someone that calls her Moonbeam, which is just, I love pet names. And so that makes me so happy, too. I have no clue where this is going to go. I've tried to remain kind of spoiler-free, but I'm excited to see it. And so far, I'm enjoying the writing style. Okay, I am now 50% into When the Moon Hatched, and... There's been a lot that has happened since the last update. Um, there's a lot of hidden history here. I have my suspicions, but I can't even tell you my suspicions without it being a spoiler. 
It's been real slow in places though. So again, kind of slow on the plot progression. It's very character focused and character heavy. So if that's the kind of thing you love in a novel, I think this would be totally up your alley. Right now it's feeling kind of sluggish though with the pacing and I'm feeling like if maybe it was 100 or 200 pages shorter, it would be a bit snappier and I would probably be a little more on it and less bored. Um, it is over 700 pages, so it is a quite a thick novel, but I am still having a good time. I'm still enjoying the character interactions and I'm enjoying seeing more about her past and things that are coming to light. And this is where I have my theories uh, based in. And so I'm excited to see if I was right or not. All right, so I finished When the Moon Hatched and I give it a four star. It was very enjoyable. I do wish the pacing had been a little bit quicker. My suspicions were correct. I saw it coming and it was right. And apparently this is actually a series. See, I told you I went in kind of blind. So apparently it's a series and I'm excited to pick up the next one whenever it's available. And I hope you guys check this out because it was really good. I may be convinced to get a beautiful edition when I'm at a polycon. We'll see. All right, I found a secret place in the library where it's nice and quiet and private and it's like this little squirreled away room and you can reserve it ahead of time and it's like, yes, please, because when the high schoolers get out and they head to the library, it is so incredibly noisy around here that even with my earphones on and the volume all the way almost max where it's like, hey, you can go deaf listening this high, I still cannot hear my audiobook over their conversations. So being that I go to the library to read, I have discovered this private room of quiet utopia. <laughs> And so I have started The Ever King, and I am so excited about this. Um, I didn't know what I expected other than it's supposed to be kind of piratey, but I'm about 25% in, so I am a little over 100 pages, and oh my gosh, it's cute. It doesn't grab me quite like Broken Bonds, but very very close. I am very excited about this. We have a beginning story of a young girl befriending a young boy and he calls her songbird and she calls him serpent and it's this cute little exchange if you will that also gives me the kind of vibes of if you watched um the uh uh, oh, why am I blanking on the pirate movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, um, when you have the young girl who gets that little talisman necklace thing from the young boy um, when he washes up. And so it kind of gives me those feels. Super cute. Well, then the two are separated. And now we're years into the future, and she is the daughter of a king, and they're the Earth Fae. And lo and behold, her serpent comes back and he is the king of the water fae. And so it's it's cute. It's, so far, I'm really into it. I'm really enjoying their you know, bickering and bantering back and forth. I'm enjoying the magic in this world of how they use song to manipulate the water and stuff. And they can travel like under the ocean to go faster. And it's like a kind of bubble goes around them to protect them. And it's just really, really cool. I am really enjoying this book and I'm getting all the nice pirate feels for my September reading. So I am now halfway in Ever King and Oh my gosh, I am loving it. I am loving it. So the Pirate King's got a bit of a background that'll kind of break your heart a little bit, but really makes me like Eric more. And I'm really enjoying the relationship between the two of them. There's definitely a draw and pull between the two of them, which is so sweet. But he's also kind of a morally gray character, which is really fun. And there's some revelations happening. Again, you know, I'm spoiler free here, but... Let's just say there's a whole nother layer to this that I did not expect and I am loving. I am eating this up. It is so good. You know, I usually like audiobooks the best and then physical reads. So the fact that this is not audio, this is physical and I keep wanting to pick it back up is a huge compliment and it's feeling definitely four star vibes so far for me at the halfway point. I am absolutely loving it. It's a duology. I 100% have no doubt I'm going to have to pick up the next ones pretty darn quick. And yeah, I'm just having a wonderful time. I'm getting all the piratey feels, uh, fey feels, you know, rom forbidden romance, uh, stabby female lead, like all the good things in this one. 
uh, yeah, I'm in the same shirt as I was in the previous clip because, like I said, I can't put this thing down. <laughs> so we're several hours later, but I am now 75% into it. Um, I am almost to the end. I am like, I don't know, less than 70 pages from the end. And oh my gosh. Okay, so we've had some spies, which is fun, but just the way they're talking to each other now and hearing what all is involved with the mantle that the ever king needs to control the seas there's more to it than that and there's like a sea witch who explains this and you get to meet her and there's other characters that are part of his ship and crew that are just phenomenal i love them when you read this just remember that i said i absolutely love the cook and i absolutely love celine and i'm just i think the cook's name was seawell I'm pretty sure. I just literally read his name a few minutes ago, but I think it's Sewell. Love, love, love those characters so much. And obviously love the king, Eric, and love the main character, Olivia. And I just, I love that he calls her songbird and she calls him serpent. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I love that they have a past. I love their relationship together. I, I'm loving this, guys. This may be a five star. Honestly, at this point, this may very well be a five star for me. It's not finished. I'm almost to the end. I am like page 326. But he just told her the absolute freaking sweetest story about the past and the stars and how the stars were created and who they represent. And it is the freaking sweetest story ever. I love this book so much. <sighs> I just finished during sprints. The Ever King. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> five stars, hands down, five stars. And the cliffhanger is a, oh my God, I need to get the Ever Queen like breaking right now. So requested it from the library and I'm going to go see if it's in so I can start on that right away because, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I'm invested. I am so invested. It's not quite the love affair that I have for... A Broken Bindings series, but it is like right below it. And Broken Bindings wasn't piratey. So especially if I'm wanting, wanting pirates, this is it. This is everything. Oh my freaking gosh. I had no idea. So LJ Andrews cannot wait to meet you in a polycon and get some gorgeous editions of this series. Apparently it's a whole thing. I had no idea. I thought it was just the duology. Silly me or trilogy even because I think there's a third one coming out missed something or other. When I go through and edit this, I'll put it here for you. So I thought it was just a duology. It's going to be a trilogy. And on top of that, apparently there's a whole world with the Earth Fay and stuff. I didn't know. I'll make sure to put the books here too. Oh my gosh. I had no idea. I cannot wait to dive into this world more. I cannot wait. I just cannot wait. I cannot wait. So I'm going to ride this high and this glow and uh, desperately try to find the Ever Queen and... Guys, this is so fun. This is so fun. I can't wait till a polygon. <laughs>